Hey folks, you may have noticed that VMware recently uh, released update 1 for ESXi 7.0. Now, uh, I've just opened up the release notes here and you can uh, skim this uh, on your own if you want to. Uh, there are actually quite a few exciting news, uh, additional um, support for Lifecycle Manager, and quite a few changes to VMware tools, time synchronization, and even new virtual hardware version. But uh, what I'm going to focus today uh, on is in the lab. As you know, I have just one physical host right now, and it's not running on update one, but I do want to get it upgraded to update one. And of course, to get this done, the first thing we have to do is actually get this downloaded. Now, if we uh, start skimming to the page here, we start seeing that there's a few ways they, they suggest we use Lifecycle Manager. Well, I can't really do that because I have just one host where the vCenter is running, meaning I can't use the vCenter on host to reboot the host running the visa. Now this, this is a, a cyclic situation, right? So once we get some nested hosts uh, up and running later on, we can uh, definitely start doing something like that. But for now, uh, I'm going to do it in, in a different way. So basically what we'll do is we'll head to the VMware download page, click on this, and I'll, I'll post the link to the release notes in the, uh, in, in the uh, description as well. Here uh, we can see we've uh, entered up, let's close this and see, okay, what we want to download is 7.0 uh, update one. So go to downloads. You can always check up here just in case there's something newer after this video came out. And we have two options, either the ISO image, we could put that in, boot from that and maybe do the upgrade and so on. I don't really want to do that. Instead, I want to download this offline uh, bundle zip file. So we're gonna download that. Let's see here, okay, so I have to go and log in. Oops, sign in. See if it redirects correctly back. It did, yeah. Uh, agreeing to this end user license agreement and it is downloading. So the next thing we want to do is actually log into the host. Uh, log into my host here. I could also catch it through the visa and that would be completely fine as well, but uh, uh, I, I don't have any of the uh, virtual machines powered on at this time because that would mean that uh, I would have to basically power them off anyway. And we also didn't yet configure any automatic startups. I'll show you in a later video how to do that. So basically what we'll do for now is we'll go to storage. We have our one single data store, click on that, data store browser, and then we're gonna create a directory here and we'll call it 7.0 uh, update one, create directory. And then we'll basically just wait a little bit for this uh, download here to uh, finish. It should be quite fast. Okay, so the file has finished downloading. We can see it's right down here. I'm already in the folder we created. Click upload, have my little uh, uh, zip file here. We'll open that up. We'll see it starts to get uploaded. We'll close this down here. You can see the upload is progressing. We'll wait for this to finish. Okay, so the file has been uploaded. That's perfect. Close this down. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is actually start getting this into the system. Okay, so now that you get to the console of the host here, we can uh, use the Alt F1 uh, hotkeys here to get to the console, but you can see the, or actually it's called a shell. And you can see from here that I, I don't have any chance of logging in right now. So we'll use Alt F2 to get back to the direct console user interface. Press F2, log in. And the reason of course is that the shell is currently disabled. So we go down to troubleshooting options, pick this, enable shell. From here, you could also enable SSH if you wanted to. Uh, then you could use something like PuTTY to remotely connect in case you don't have some uh, console access like I'm using here. All right. Then let's use the Alt F1 again. You can see now I actually get prompted to log in. Type the username and password, okay. And you can use Control L to kind of wipe the screen here. So we will use a command called ESX CLI and uh, it works pretty well. You can basically type ESX CLI and it'll show you what kind of options you have. Let's you build it out. So we can type ESX CLI software, okay. And I have to start scrolling down a little bit here. So what is it we want to do? Well, uh, we want to do software uh, sources. Okay, type that out. You can see if we wanna uh, see the content here. So we'll use profile. 
what do we want to do? Do we want to list? Yes, we do. Okay. Then we have a few uh, options here, uh, dash D for depot. So where is this file that we want to use? Well, where was that? It was in VMFS volumes, and then the name of the data store, which is um, a PCIe dash SSD for me. Here we created a folder called 70, and we can type tap one time to autocomplete. Let's see what it says here. There we go. Okay, so we see there's a standard one and one with uh, no tools inside. So then uh, we probably want to try and do an update here. So uh, let's again use ESX CLI software profile. Okay, and uh, we could uh, say get install or update. Updates the host with VIPs from an image profile in a depot. Well, that sounds good. Uh, now, VIPS is a VMware infrastructure bundle, just in case uh, you were wondering. So, okay, we'll do profile updates. Uh -huh. And uh, we get some different parameters here. Dash P for profile, uh, which we'll uh, need. And uh, we might have to go back and uh, get the name one more time, just in case. But also notice we have this uh, dash dash dry run. A command uh, sitting up here performs a dry run only so it tells us what exactly is going to happen but no changes in the system that doesn't sound too bad so what if we go up here again so we get the list of what was inside okay so then update dash p oh, dash p and we have to type the profile name then so esxi dash 7.0.1 dash 1685084 dash standard and then we have to give it the path to where this was o and dash d for the depot vmfs volumes pci 70 oops no yep. and tab here and then don't forget we can do this dash dash dry dash run, which will tell us exactly what's going to happen then. Uh, quite a lot, apparently. Now this is a full update, not just a one single web file and, and it's not gonna skip any of it. Okay, now before we can start installing something like this, we have to actually put the host into maintenance mode. Maintenance mode means that no virtual machines can be powered on, on this host, they would have to be either suspended, powered off, moved somewhere else. So how do we do that? Well, ESX CLI system. Let's see what do we have inside. System, we see maintenance mode, okay. Maintenance mode with a capital M. And then we do a set. And how do we do a set then? Set. Uh, let's see here, dash E, uh, I have to find the equal sign on this uh, keyboard here. This is why it's always a good idea to make sure that uh, you have the right keyboard. But anyway, I think uh, dash E and the space should work as well. And uh, the options here would be uh, true. We want to make it uh, in the maintenance mode. So let's see here. That seemed to be correct. Okay, so then the next uh, command would be to actually go and uh, perform this install. And uh, if we go back up a few commands here, we can see we had our command here to already do this, but this time we don't want to do it with the dash dash dry run here. So let's remove that and see what happens. Okay, some hardware error here. So it says that the we have some unsupported devices. I already knew this, so that's uh, completely fine. If you remember from the uh, initial install video back in the day, we uh, had some uh, PCI device. I think it was the RAID controller, which is uh, okay. So how do we ignore this? Well, it already tells us here. Right? We can basically apply dash dash, no hardware warning. Uh, if this was in a production environment, of course, we would want to immediately investigate this further. So let's. I run this command. 
Okay, so we can see here all of these patches that we saw from the previous dry run have now been installed. Honestly, there wasn't uh, too much to see, so I, I, I paused the video here for a little bit, but uh, I was just spamming all of these here. So the next step, basically, at this point is to reboot the host. We can do this because it's in maintenance mode without any uh, large issues. Now, since this is, in fact, a physical server, not a nested host, this reboot is going to take quite some time. So I'm going to pause the video, and then when we come back, the host hopefully has finished booting up again. Again. Okay, so we can actually see the host has booted up again, and we see the nice new build number here, 16850804. Let's try and see if we can log into the host as well. Now, the thing is, once we get to the host, it may not be so obvious that this is suddenly 70 update 1. So just kind of keep that in mind in, in this process here. And um, if we go back, we could uh, also uh, log in here. And uh, if we go to enable the shell again, because that should have been reset when we... Oh, no, it was not. Okay, great. Well, then in that case, let's go to the shell, log in. If you're ever uh, uncertain a little bit, you can always use this uh, SX CLI command, uh, system, Version get, and from here we can even see it's 701. And in case we were really curious, it says update one. So that uh, should be uh, it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll make sure to put the links in. And one last thing please don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.